Drafting your own custom deck is one of the best game mechanics in the game cards. I'm going to put together my first deck and we're going to play it against a real opponent here today on Legendary Tactics. The card drafting mechanic in any of these games, whether it be uh, cards or uh, Hearthstone, Magic, Netrunner, designing your own deck is really probably the most fun um, part of this uh, of this style of game um, and allows you to really get creative in finding combos and all that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to, there's a couple of bonus packs here that I'm opening up um, and uh, taking a look. I think this this part is really well done. It makes it feel like you know you're opening your Christmas present on Christmas morning, and these are the cards you get for Christmas. Um, I guess the uh, the four of clubs there is a dead card. Um, so yeah, the the card building or the sorry the the, the deck drafting uh, mechanic here is is uh, really well done. You you pick uh, a, a new deck there. You can design. Uh, presumably uh, a fair number of them and you choose your main nation and then an ally so I'm, I'm gonna start with, with Germany and uh, we'll choose a uh, an American ally so again not true to history but um, you got to mix these things up sometime um, my general approach whenever I'm drafting uh, a deck um, uh, if, if possible is to kind of go through the cards and just you know, pick the cards that I would like to have. Try and sort through, and 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 this is obviously um, I'm still fairly new to this uh, to this game, um, but um, I find that you know you go through the deck and just start with the ones that you really really capture your your imagination. And 506 Airborne is one of those cards. Um, I having played against the American um, deck in the tutorial. Um, this is a nice card. It's a relatively tough card. It only costs one credit, so it's a perfect early game entry into the into the lineup. And uh, I think it's a it's a solid one. Sometimes the basic units, the ones without a special ability, get overlooked because they're not as flashy. But um, they are just as good in their own way um, if you see it the right way. They generally tend to be more inexpensive, um, and they still give you you know good value for that so you know sometimes you pay extra for that ability or you you lose a bit of attack or defense for a special ability so um, so I'm just uh, I'm going through and picking the ones that that jump out at me and again as you get more advanced you'll put together synergies and that's where you'll start in building a deck that fits a certain meta or uh, uh, you know takes advantage of certain card synergies I love the War Machine. Any economic cards, I think, in this game are, are good. If you can get an economic edge, um, it can really allow you to, to surge forward. And, and the War Machine is one of those uh, ones that can pay off handsomely over the course of a game, especially if you get it early. Uh, we'll make sure we have some, uh, some good air units in there uh, as well. And I, I, love, I love the artillery for some reason in this game. So um, I'll be sure to grab uh, utility. Uh, and artillery and if you look at the bottom of the card uh, the top row there you'll see there's some gray uh, sort of squares or whatever dots and those are the number of cards that you can have in the deck so sometimes you're limited to one sometimes you can have as much as four uh, you know you can see the Reichsbank I can have up to three in my deck so it's a, a neat way of limiting um, how many of each card you can have um, some of them uh, um, I think are I mean probably it's also tied to the uh, those card packs that I opened earlier as well but um, but I, I think that that's uh, potentially a nice way to limit the uh, the way these decks are built so you don't get too overpowered too early maybe um, in general uh, as well with these sort of games I, especially a game like this like Hearthstone you want those expensive units you know other games you may Go with a low cost uh, kind of option where you have a lot of cards at low cost but this one this type of game you want to have the most expensive cards your economy expands every turn no matter what you do so you're going to be in a position to get them out uh, at some point it may not be until later in the game but uh, but that's fine you, you want those cards there uh, because that's what you're building towards but don't neglect 
the, the early game either. Um, I, I generally try and uh, skew things um, early game so that uh, because those early game units, the one cost or two cost units can be utilized anytime. Uh, you can deploy them anytime later um, and they're still fine, but they're much more affordable. Um, this this uh, this game is uh, and has, with your ally as well. Um, and I tried to get away with this, but I couldn't. It's an invalid deck. Um, you're limited to 12 cards from your ally. So in this case, I'm, my main nation is Germany. So the U.S. is my ally. So I have to pair things back. And I try to keep, if there's a card that I really like, I try to keep it in there, but I may reduce the number. Instead of four, I'll take two. Instead of two, I'll take one, that kind of thing. Um, and sometimes you have to make the tough decisions, you know, as to which ones to get rid of entirely. I decided that uh, uh, the P40 uh, Warhawk should probably just go. And uh, but again, keep your keep your more expensive ones if you can, because uh, you will want to get those out. Those are going to be your game winners at some point. Um, what I my general thinking in this, I mean, this is the first time I've put together a deck like this, but my general thinking is I want, um, th as usual, I like to skew things towards the more inexpensive because I find there's nothing worse than having, say, you know, seven credits to spend. You've got a uh, a five uh, a unit with a cost of five credits to put down, and then you don't have anything else to put down because you can't afford it. And, and you have and you end up wasting credits because um, perhaps the board situation is such you don't want to move things around too much or whatever but anyway um, it's nice to have the flexibility that those uh, more affordable units provide and also multiple targets um, in this game for the most part each unit can only attack one other unit so if you have a lot of units down it, it can uh, you can kind of swarm them a little bit <laughs> in that sense so so anyway, I took out all the uh, U.S. cards. I really, I really should have been the American with the German as an ally. But uh, anyway, um, I've, I've pulled out all the uh, the the offending cards, and now I'm going through the German uh, uh, listing here to um, to to make up these last seven cards. And it, actually, if you if you look towards the top, what's really nice, you can sort the cards by unit. Uh, if you like, you can sort them by nation. As if you like, just click on the logo. So I just clicked on the on the uh, German cross there, and uh, it, it it filtered it so that I only have the uh, the German cards to choose from. So again, just trying to you know hit that balance. Uh, sometimes there's cards I'm not totally thrilled that I need, but um, but they're all going to be useful in their own way. And it, it's a you know again, it's about tweaking. The deck balancing the deck finding those synergies is always a a, a good thing um, to think about and uh, in this game I'm, I'm still learning the synergies so I, I didn't none of them jumped out at me as being particularly compelling um, the the special uh, abilities are nice but there wasn't anything that I could see that where it was you know a great combination so um, so in this one, in this type of game, as in say Hearthstone or a lot of these uh, games, it, it searches for uh, you know a, an opponent that is of similar skill generally. With your whatever your your rating is on the game, they will match you with someone who is uh, provided they're online. They'll match you with someone who is of reasonable, reasonably comparable skill, and uh, so. Uh, we're up against a Russian uh, deck, and uh, we'll have to see how this goes. So, um, so I'm just looking at the uh, cards here. Um, I really like I really like to see I've got a one, two, three uh, setup because you get one extra credit per uh, turn. Uh, then you can see a clear, you know, kind of progression here. So we'll do the 506. Um, then the uh, the 59 Panzer Grenadier, and then the, the next two turns will get the other threes down. Um, potentially, there's there's a path there that I can see, and I have an expensive card, uh, which will be great um, in the uh, um, in the the next uh, like once we get uh, some units moving, because you will need some credits to move, so you don't uh, uh, you don't want to spend them all on just putting units down especially uh, your support line will fill up too so um, but it's good to have that option so 
Um, anyway, so we'll just uh, follow that path and we'll get our uh, our unit down. And I believe the, the Russian actually missed their first turn. I don't know whether that was de deliberate there. That's why there's a bit of a pause because I think the timer was going on uh, on my opponent's end. And uh, so they, they missed out on the first turn or they couldn't afford something on their first turn, one of the two. Now they have a 3-2 down, which is a little more concerning. We have a 3-2, that's uh, actually the same unit on our, that we're going to put down. So they are Russians with German allies, obviously. Um, so that's uh, good to know. Um, and, uh, you know, those three twos, um, those can be pretty effective. They're not hardy, but they do a lot of damage. So he's uh, just going to do a damage to his HQ and a damage to one of my units. I don't know if that's a particularly strong move per se, but... Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, we're just going to keep uh, following our game plan. We've got some air power in the mix, so that might uh, potentially allow us to strike from afar, and that's always good. <clears throat> but otherwise, I, I really like the cards I have in hand, um, except for... Uh, oh, got hit with some anti-aircraft fire. It's a fairly affordable way to get rid of me, actually. And um, very basic strategy, when you have one health left, you can take out a unit at full health like that, just do it. <laughs> there's, there's not much uh, sense in hanging on to the, on to the unit with one health. There's so many ways it can be destroyed before it becomes effective that you may as well use it um, uh, right away. Now this unit is kind of interesting because it's a, a guard unit. Um, and so. It's something that uh, can protect. You, you need to take it out before uh, the uh, you have the opportunity um, to uh, attack anyone else. That's kind of an interesting setup there. So we got the war machine um, uh, up, so we're going to get a boost in in economy, uh, which is great. We should be able to utilize that. Also, I find attacking with a unit that has plenty of health that will be hurt but not eliminated is obviously generally a better move if you can eliminate the other uh, the other uh, unit. So, um, anyway, we took out that unit with the uh, special ability of that vehicle, but the guard uh, setup is you know quite interesting here. So the the HQ is off limits until that 1-8 has been eliminated. Now two 1-8s. So that's kind of an interesting um, thing. I'm totally wiped off the board as it sits. Um, luckily, I've got an edge. I've got six cards in hand. He only has two, or she. My opponent only has two. Um, so that's going to be a bit of a constraint uh, for my opponent. Um, so may as well get some good, strong units down. Um, and um, especially since I'm only deploying you know, one or two uh, units per turn, I'm going to keep a lot of cards in hand, at least for now, and that's a good thing. But that guard uh, unit is kind of interesting. It certainly buys the one. It looks like it's a Chinese card. Uh, or sorry, no, it is Russian, I guess. Uh, sorry. I sometimes they use the red star for China in some games. Um, so yeah, so that's a, a really interesting defensive card that, uh, especially in combination with a couple of them there, um, they don't do a lot of damage, but they absorb a lot and I've got to fight my way through all that, all that, uh, um, all that health or all that defense before I can actually do anything interesting. Um, so that's a, kind of a, a great, uh, great card to, to, to have. It certainly buys you time if nothing else. Um, because you can, um, you know, you, you get a couple of those cards down and you don't have to, you can build up. You don't have to worry about um, defending your more valuable units for now or your more fragile units. And uh, he, he takes, uh, takes me down for one, hits himself in the process, or herself. Um, so this leaves me vulnerable to that unit there. And I would have done the exact same thing. So, um, now I still have an edge in cards, and sometimes the downside of having uh, too many inexpensive cards 
is the fact that you can run out of cards in hand. And so if you are building a deck that uh, has a lot of uh, sort of cheap, affordable cards, see if you can mix in some cards that uh, have some card draw, um, if you can. Um, so uh, that way you can maximize the... Uh, you know the the ability you need to get cards back in hand in order to keep uh, playing um, there's nothing worse than having 12 credits to spend in one card in hand <laughs> it's like the worst situation um, so you can see the guard in full effect here i cannot uh, attack there so i gotta take out these uh, these other units um, before i can do anything and that's a really really valuable uh, ability i like this uh this one card's ability um, where it hits a random unit in the same line. That's kind of a neat uh, thing to do, but not much I can do otherwise here. Um, oh, sorry, yes, I forgot that uh, that unit has blitz ability, so I was able to attack, use up my last credit to attack, um, at least whittle down that, uh, that guard unit. Lots of tanks on, <laughs> for my opponent. Loves his tanks. Um, and uh, he's he's this is a full court press now. Um, however, he still there's there's my opponent still only has one one card. So let's see uh, let's see how this is handled. Um, certainly, um, there could be some damage to my HQ. Um, instead, uh, looks like uh, the goal is to eliminate my my units. Or at least uh, share the share the load. Now I'm at 10 credits, so lots of uh, lots of opportunity and ability to um, do some damage. And now the guards are finally gone, so I can uh, take out a unit. And that was a that was a, a you know a, a pretty big sacrifice. But uh, you want to, especially when you have uh, enemy units in the front line, you want to take them down. <laughs> Because uh, with your HQ uh, vulnerable, um, you know he can hit me for seven, seven damage uh, this upcoming turn. Um, that gets that gets my HQ pretty vulnerable. And he's got his his nice uh, nice seven five there. Uh, yeah, he got rid of my good unit with his, with the uh, the lesser unit. And um, yeah. So this is uh, posing an interesting choice. Um, but again, I love the fact I have four cards and plenty of flexibility, especially as the credits are beginning to, to creep up. Um, and uh, in this case, I kind of misplayed. That, that card gives a bonus to cards in the front line, so I should have advanced first and, and play, then played that card. Um, so <clears throat> that was my, uh, my oversight. I hope it doesn't cost me. And uh, I like my positioning overall. I think that there is some uh, some great opportunities. So <clears throat> going to, to drop some units down. Um, my opponent is not going to be able to take out my frontline unit without a lot of damage. Um, but man, lots of big tanks. Probably the best of the Russian and German tanks in that deck. <laughs> it's certainly... Um, yeah, very strong units, and uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, yeah, I'm surprised, actually. Uh, my opponent chose not to attack me. I guess that's fine, um, but they we're wasting six credits, essentially, and now I can uh, start loading up on uh, units and, and moving them into the front line, putting the pressure on. So I'm just going to hammer the Stalingrad HQ there. Um, why not? Uh, that's what wins you the game. Sometimes you can get caught up with with uh, destroying the minions uh, so much that you forget uh, the, the actual point of the game is to uh, reduce the enemy's HQ to zero. And this happened, I've had this sort of thing happen in, in games like Magic or Hearthstone or whatever. You get so caught up in, in eliminating the enemy uh, you know monsters or minions and uh in this case they're they're soldiers that you forget well the hq is vulnerable um the in this case we have 
Uh, 13 damage. We can actually, if if there's no attack uh, coming on from my opponent, we can eliminate him um, and 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 crush uh, the 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 Stalingrad HQ. So yeah. Um, so this is uh, something that um, my opponent will need to deal with on some level. Um, looks like with it, with the strength of uh, the tanks that are available. Um, I don't think that'll be a problem. That was actually well done overall. <clears throat> overall, um, But we still have three cards, and we've got three cards in our support line. Um, I mean, more credits uh, coming. We finally have uh, a, an air unit to attack with Blackout. <laughs> so that gives us another card in hand. And uh, so we are loading up, and again, no, no reason to wait. We'll hit the, uh, the Stalingrad HQ. We'll take out a, a unit there. And uh, we'll get some more units up on the front line. And the pressure's on. And we're spending all of our credits, which of course is, ob is obviously going to give us uh, more of, a, 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 of an advantage. Um, so we'll have to see what sort of attacks my opponent does here. Generally speaking, pretty smart keeping that unit alive, keeping it as a threat. Um, now we're down to to um, some <laughs> basically the end of that unit, uh, and uh, uh, there's not a lot of strength left. Oh, and the enemy surrenders. And you know what? I don't uh, I don't uh, blame them. I think that uh, this was just a matter of time. Because um, I, I had more cards coming, more cards coming up from the support line. It was going to be it was going to be bad. So while I hate to see people resign, it happens. Thanks for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.